Hello everybody and welcome back to Weather Mountains, and this is my overly explained tutorial Let's Play. Since it's been a little bit since I recorded one of these, I just wanted to say that I took kind of a break for the holidays and the new year, and now we are returning. So, this Let's Play, the whole point of it, in case you'd forgotten, is to obtain the role of Mountain Home in my faction, or at the very least, a Dutch, a Duke or a Duchess, so that we can be members of society and ranked highly amongst our world. Now, if you look at the minimap, you'll notice that we made a discovery in the last episode. You'll notice we found the caverns. It turns out we missed them by not a wide margin. I'd been digging around all over the place, and as we moved down a layer to dig a little deeper, well, and I was making some storage, we kind of bumped into the caverns. So today we get to do a little bit of securing of the caverns, and I also have a side goal for this fortress today. We've also found this fun little spot here. It's a very strange set of rocks. We've got clear diamonds and green diamonds and black diamonds, very fancy well-appointed items here, which I would like to do something with. We also have found some other rare gems sitting off here in the edges. We got more limonite and magnetite, as well as plenty of dead pigtails and dimple cups and sweet pods abound, so I'm looking forward to making the most out of those. We also have some cave spider remains, and as we look a little deeper off into the caverns, I think it would be wise for us to do some peering around corners, because seeing dead things off in the caverns is often not a good sign for the longevity of one's fortress. As side projects today, I would like to prettify up these uh, pr particular um, uh, temple zones down here. I would like to make them all a little bit nicer. And for the fortress itself, we want to work on expanding our industry a little bit, because right now it's kind of cramped in kind of these two rooms. we got these very small forges, which admittedly are quite productive, but aren't quite what we need just yet. And we also have this small farming zone, which also is quite productive, but admittedly not quite enough for our needs or what they're going to be soon. As for bedrooms, our dwarves are quite well set up, and we have quite a few bedrooms worked on, but... Just as the uh, kind of starter for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up some more beds because we need more beds, and I'm going to expand some of our stockpiles a little bit because, as you can see, we're out of wood. So we need more beds. We need more bedrooms. I need to get the rest of these finished. And uh, once I'm done kind of prettying up this area and chopping down some trees on the surface and I get some wood down here, I'll continue talking. If we go through these notifications real quick, we can see that Human Bowman has come to visit, and we also got some migrants not too long ago. There's plenty of jobs being cancelled, mostly in related to rope reed seeds, which is fair enough. We do need to queue up some um, of the uh, clo cloth jobs that I could be doing uh, to get some more of those seeds into rotation. We, of course, do have this lovely little drawbridge here, which uh, very easily we can see where it's connected, just as a reminder. So if we decide we need to close this drawbridge, it's very easy to do that. We're actually going to change the name of this lever to front door because we're going to be doing some things uh, with this little lever space. This is going to kind of become our Grand Central Station today. As earlier mentioned, we do have access to the caverns now, and I'm going to be blocking that off. So what we're going to do uh, with a way to seal this just in case something horrific appears is we are going to make a little drawbridge going this way. Now, it's going to be very small, and as you can see on the drawbridge screen, it's pointed towards the door. As you can also see, there's the little gear right there. Um, but keep in mind, if you for some reason would like to do this over top of an open space, like let's just say this water down here uh, with this drawbridge, we could very easily do that. However, it's not going to let us place it uh, here, so the actual actual gears themselves need to be firmly placed on land. Just kind of a tip for that. So we're going to place this little drawbridge here, and uh, we're going to continue waiting for the dwarves to put those bedrooms together. Now that this drawbridge is set up, something else that we're going to do is we're going to actually put a hatch cover right here, which I constructed in the last episode. We're also then going to put flooring over these two spots right here. And essentially what this allows us to do is in times of great peril, when something terrifying shows up, we can lock this trapdoor and if that's not enough then we can then connect this to a lever right here so this is going to be connected to a lever which i'm going to build via the mechanisms and fluids section we're going to place this lever right here and instead of using closest material like i have been let's see what options we have let's use a orthoclase mechanism now this lever once connected is going to be kind of like our emergency 
slam it shut, close it, lock it off, lock it down in case something scary shows up in the caverns. Something I've also seen other people doing is putting a barracks in the caverns, which I'm pretty keen on doing in this series, so I think that is something that we are going to do. And uh, until then, I just wanted to say, once again, thank you very much to everybody who's been watching this series. You know, this is the 10th episode of this restart since I restarted this format, and I, I've been very happy with how the series has been going on so far. I'm pretty new to Let's Plays, believe it or not. This is maybe the third one I've ever done in my entire career as somebody making content on the internet, so the reception has been lovely, and everybody's responses has been great. Something that I would like, just as a feedback thing down in the comments, is once this Let's Play is done, should I continue doing the occasional Let's Play like this on YouTube, just as some variety to kind of batch up between the, the very long stream VODs that go up on this channel? Let me know down in the comments section what you think. All right, so we're getting that lever connected right now. Uh, we're now going to link this lever to this bridge right here. So this, once getting once it's all linked up, we can then also rename the lever. So this is going to be called Cavern Entrance Layer 1, because there are three cavern layers, and this is the first of three. So we will be very uh, aware of where the bads are coming from when they start showing up. Um, also, if we jump up a little ways, we can see, ooh, there's still no uh, wood appearing. Well, how's that wood coming along up here? Doesn't seem to be getting prioritized by anybody in particular. Is nobody hacking down my trees? Do I need to increase the priority? I think I need to increase the priority. Well, let's go over to the advanced tree hacky downy button, uh, 9,000, and increase the priority on that. Of course, we could go start chopping down the trees in the cavern layers, but they're still considered trees by the elves, so it's not like it's going to increase our popularity with the uh, local PETA representatives. And also, because it is, it's is—it's in the caverns, all that really does is upset the cavern residents. So, we do have a strange mood, however. Asmil, the mayor, has been possessed. Would you look at that? Our mayor is possessed. Well, you know, it sounds like a normal politician on a Monday, but, like, let's just have a peek, shall we? I'm really kind of curious. I don't actually know what their job of choice is. So we have a strange mood attached to this mayor, possessed by unknown forces. We're going to give them a follow as they run around. Well, they've they've grabbed tetrahedrite. I missed what they grabbed. So they have claimed a stoneworker's workshop. So they are a stoneworker by career choice. This particular dwarf, obviously, is not Vendril, has a good memory and a developed sense of empathy. Probably why he got elected mayor, if I had to guess. Personality-wise, he does not generally seek retribution for his past wrongs. Sounds like a politician. And dislikes the abstract discussions and would much rather focus on practical examples. If we click on the dwarf, he's now muttering Dacus Bumdas Bubnus. Dacus Bubnus. Dacus Bubnus is what uh, uh, Asmiel is um, muttering. And let's see what they've claimed. They grabbed a piece of tetrahedra, right? They grabbed a piece of cave spider silk cloth and dingo leather. Now, to anybody who is here, who's watching this, who is new to moods, once they start muttering something like this, that is good news. That means they have everything they need, and all they're doing from that point forward is uh, working on the item. We do also have a stray baby alpaca up here, so I'm just going to jump up above ground and give that uh, some pasture space. And I think we're actually going to move some of our livestock down into the basement area, that that lower cavern spot. Uh, specifically, the, the livestock that we wish to keep and hang on to. Um, we do have a lot of random animals at this point in the fort, and the numbers are growing. We maybe should work on uh, slaughtering some of these, but... We will let this dwarf continue their artifact, let the game keep running, and uh, beds still haven't started coming down. How's there? Are we, am I just, like, not cutting wood? How many woodcutters do we have in this fortress? Just one? Oh, and I see. Okay, so only selected do this, and our only woodcutter is a uh, swords dwarf, so they are very busy doing swords dwarfy things. Well, that explains it. Uh, let's find who's doing something useless. Uh, who I who I could very much prefer you do something else with your career. Let's put Inod down here, the carpenter, undoing the uh, the the wood cutting things. And since I would like, I always like to have more than one uh, wood cutter. Let's grab a couple of my farmers as well. Let's also grab a gelder and a, and well, maybe not a gelder because you're currently doing mining. Let's grab this miller right here because they're not doing anything of value. We can get them running that. So I'll continue the video once we actually have wood in this stockpile. So you may also remember in the last episode, we queued up a work order for uh, processing plants. And as you can see, it's actually working quite well. These above ground farms are now fully planted with rope reed seeds. So what I think something else we're gonna try and do, if not in this episode, then sometime in the next few, is we're gonna kind of cut down this area right here and make a little exposed gardening area and maybe make a little indoor uh, greenhouse type space for our dwarves. In fact, I could queue something up like that real quick right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go all the way up to here, all the way along this way, 
And I do have these nice bauxite blocks as well as some other blocks. Uh, lots of shale, so I think we'll use the shale. Uh, we're going to go up and over and just see how big this little garden spot here goes. All right, then. So we're going to go up to about there, I think. We're going to also go over here to the side uh, because I don't like direct. I don't like things that look like absolute squares. So I think we're going to avoid doing just plain squares. Uh, we're going to go over to here where this child is standing. And I'm actually just going to uh, dig straight over this way and up. Well, maybe actually cancel the digging. But uh, what we're going to do is I think we're going to build a little wall piece along here. I think I'm going to queue up this to be chopped down. We're going to build a little wall piece right here and then channel this area down. So we're going to go a layer up and I'm going to remove the rest of these trees on the surface just because we're doing some we're doing some house renovations, you know, and you can renovate your house. Uh, and we're actually let's seal it off right here at this corner spot right there. And the idea of this is to kind of build kind of a little indoor courtyard with a ceiling so that there's still grass growing in the game, still considers it to be above ground, but we can grow stuff and also pasture our animals. Uh, Asmil the mayor has created Dacus Bumnus, a tetrahedrite ring, and claims it has a family heirloom. Well, we will definitely need to have a peek at that. So before we do anything with this, I'm going to grab my mayor and rename you because you have a new nickname, which is Bubness, because that's just way too funny of a name. Bubness, our mayor. Mayor Bubness. Uh, I shall name you Chloe Color Scoured. So I'm assuming that means um, scoured. Uh, and that was very satisfying. Well, you did claim it as a family heirloom, so it is yours to keep, I would suppose. Uh, this is a tetrahedrite ring. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. This object is adorned with hanging rings of cave spider silk and menaces with spikes of tetrahedrite. On the item is an image of two cushion-cut gems in dingo leather. And it's worth 2,000 zethal. Well, there's something we can do with this item. So I can actually go into the nobles screen here. And as you can see, our mayor, who doesn't quite have enough for him just yet, is very much not pleased with the, the current situation. He wants us to make two short swords as well. Um, I'm going to click on this button right here. And we are going to assign Dacus Bubnus, your ring, to him. So he now has a brand new toy of his own to call his own. Because, you know, mayors, I think at this point, deserve some recognition. I mean, it's a hard job demanding items every couple months for some reason. So, might as well give him what he wants. Um, the mayor's space also still requires two chests. And uh, something else that we began, because I swear that every single time I'm talking about this, it's like something else that began is uh, we need to work a little bit more on this uh, dungeon space. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a little open dungeon as well as those separate cells, because fun fact, you can just scatter chains around. So this is going to be kind of like we're going to have isolation cells, and then we're going to have a main dungeon square right there. Now, um, because stuff's actually getting chopped down and uh, we're going to finally start getting bedrooms set up, I'm just going to kind of address, uh, like, place some doorways in these and get these ready for beds, even though they're not quite ready to be assigned just yet. Uh, and that, that'll be boring viewing, so we'll just simply wait until that's over and then we'll continue the video. Well, I was able to get seven new bedrooms set up before a human caravan has arrived. Well, it looks like we're going to have to do some trading in that case because it is that time again. So we're going to fly all the way down here and we're going to see what we have to sell. I'm not actually too sure. It can't be that much of value. We've got to have something, though. Uh, we do definitely have, you know, uh, plenty of blocks. Uh, could I interest you in some blocks? Perhaps um, some various other items. We'll, we'll have to take a peek. It has been a little bit, so I'm not entirely sure what we've been producing here, which is a bit of a bit of a shame. Now, I do want to show you a trick real quick. If you want to get rid of clothing uh, of low quality, uh, you can just search by X. Now, this used to work in the stock screen as well. You could search by everything by X and it would just tell you. Um, but that unfortunately doesn't work anymore. So I'm just going to quickly sell off everything in here uh, that starts with X just to get some sort of trading going. Of course, it is very easy to just over trade things in Dwarf Fortress. And you know what? I'm not going to worry about doing that too much. I'm also going to jump over into the rings category and I'm just going to remove this because I want to see what other rings we have. We could definitely sell them some bauxite rings and some dolomite rings and some shale rings and some mudstone rings. And we can go down to bracelets as well and sell them some of these. Various different little crafts are solid cheap traders, but maybe never really valued at that to, that that much. 
And the dwarves then all drop everything that they're doing and then run up in here and begin trading. Uh, looks like the main reason we're never we never have charcoal in supply is uh, just due to the fact that we just don't have any logs. Um, so, you know, uh, so the, this this whole like trees need to be chopped down thing is very much. Uh, slowing down my entire production line. However, on the good side, they have been chopped down now, so we are getting started with the actual process of getting stuff removed, including these upper layers. Uh, just keep in mind, when you do chop down trees, it does remove a little bit of grass, which means if it's right over top of your entryway, it will leave a hole in the ceiling. So be a little bit watchful about that when removing stuff. Now, we do have an opportunity for some... Um... For, for some diplomacy here. The mayor, Bubnus, uh, meets with the human head treasurer, Destis. And uh, Destis says, on behalf of the Merchants Guild, let me extend my greetings to your people. Of course, there is much to discuss. There is much to share, and we have added information to your civilization and world info. What requests do you have of our merchants? This is curious indeed. It's not very often that you get the opportunity to trade with the humans with a royal treasure. It must mean that we are on good speaking terms with these humans. As we scroll down through their various offerings, we can see that uh, generally their offerings will be pretty similar to dwarves, except minus some deep underground things, uh, with a more heavy emphasis on various different varieties of surface critter leather, and, as well as things that can be found and made on the surface. Sometimes you can also import some particularly interesting weapons. Like, let's go have a peek at their weapons variety, in fact. This is something I wasn't expecting at all in this playthrough, and I'm quite excited to be able to do this let's do toy let's do pets first because sometimes they have fun animals they do have grizzly bears very good uh, livestock for food and um fat and uh, leather and meats as well as just also them being kind of hilarious to be breeding and also an excellent military animal so you know what i'm just gonna request very kindly some grizzly bears um and uh, then we're gonna scroll up here and just look for weapons. There's weapons. So let's see. Can I request? Yes, I can. I'm going to request you bring me some whips. Excellent. Whips are one of the strongest weapons in Dwarf Fortress. Dwarves can equip them, and dwarves can't make them. So a human delicacy, as well as a human craft. Looking forward to seeing some of those. Of course, you could mod your game to be able to make your dwarves make whips, but because they're ridiculously strong, I just like to import them. Um, all right, so uh, they want yarn earrings. Wow, that's specific. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to providing you with yarn earrings, I suppose. Um, we're also going to remove this kind of upper, uh, these upper trees on this side. And uh, we're going to begin building some of this flooring here. So this is going to be kind of the way we're going to do this uh, construction up here. We're just going to bring blocks and we're just going to make floors. And we're going to kind of go around... Oh, wait. I I, just, I I have this bad habit of, like, forgetting to turn off the uh, option of use nearest material when I go to construct something and then immediately regretting it when I do it. All right, so we're going to go all the way up to here. And I don't know if I even have enough. Not even close. Okay, so... Hmm. Do I want to use wood? I really don't. Uh, let's just continue producing blocks for a little bit. And instead of building it up right away, let's just go around this side here and uh, kind of go around the edge instead of just building it right away. We're going to continue using this shale and we're going to kind of connect along this way and go over to here. Where's that shale at? There it is. We have 98 of it. And then we're going to go over to this tree here. And they should be able to build most of this. And I'm seeing we have a ghost. Errol, has the ghostly spear dwarf has risen and is hunting the fortress. Did I not get all those bodies dealt with? Did I not make coffins? Did I? Am I really that silly? I'm just going to check over here. Well, we do have some dead dwarves. I, I suppose that that was a mistake on my part. Um, well, um, how embarrassing is that? Um, so what I think we're going to do is we're going to quickly queue up the last little bit of sealant on here. I'm going to make sure that we have some coffins, and then we're going to quickly... Uh, get that done. You know, I, I think it was the last episode where I just kind of kept on ex stating that, you know, I'm going to forget things, and that is kind of the way of things in Dwarf Fortress, but I, I'm a, I'm very sorry to these poor dwarves that I forgot to properly respect the dead. Like, that's horrific of me. Now, the, the better question is, did I make coffins? No, I didn't. Did I make slabs? No, I didn't. Okay, well, let's queue up both of those, and I will be right back once those jobs get done.
I've got all the jobs queued up, but we're just simply waiting on trading now. So it's going to be a second before all these items get up here anyways. So while we were waiting for the broker to arrive, some migrants also arrived, which is a bit of a bonus. It, it appears that our, um, our our broker is too busy eating, uh, but the population is rising, as it does when new migrants arrive. Look at that. It's climbing. It's climbing. It's climbing. It's climbing. I did say that we were going to be sealing off the caverns today, and that still is the main plan. So this might end up being a little bit of a lengthy episode. We've got a lot to do. I think we're around halfway through the recording of this particular episode, but we can get this trading done real quick. So let's just simply mark all and see how much value we have uh, 4080 not bad for just kind of whipping some stuff together let's see what they have they do have black bears which ugh, appears to just be a whole bunch of bears well geez uh hmm. i don't really want to trade for livestock right now because currently i need to deal with the ones i have so i think i'm simply going to do a very small trade with these humans i'm going to buy these two pieces of raw green glass just in case i need them for an artifact and that's it Thank you very much for the very small trade, humans. Please bring more next year, and please bring us grizzly bears next year. Now, since we got more migrants, let's go see uh, how many unbedded dwarves we have currently. Although, more hands are always good. So if you simply click on a bedroom, and you click on the little plus sign here, and you scroll down, you'll actually just see which dwarves don't have um, uh, quarters yet. Now... We do have quite a few unclaimed quarters in the fort. I've been pre-preparing for housing, and I've been very, very diligent about having housing ready for my dwarves. We're going to place a bunch more beds, uh, just hopefully so that we just have enough for this whole migrant wave, which would be awesome. A lot of the time when moods go negative in Dwarf Fortress, it's because the player... Um, kind of miss uh appropriates their time initially and then the dwarves become very um angered and upset due to just simply being ignored for a while uh and my goal is to avoid that where we they'll just arrive they will have bedrooms they will have what they need and they will just be happy from the get-go so now that we've done that we're going to ignore i think these temples for the rest of this episode and we're actually going to go down and see just how far down this these cavern ramps go uh, if we press r on the keyboard it's going to make it a lot clearer where there are ramps by simply giving us those fa fancy little uh arrows on them very akin to the classic ascii but much easier to read uh, for the average player these days, I feel. Um, so as I go down, we can see that there's arrows going down here, arrows going... So this is kind of our only way in and out. So what I think we're going to do is I'm going to go all the way down... Oh! Okay, never mind. It does keep going further down. There is the one arrow right there. So what I think this is going to be the bottom of our cavern expansion for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go kind of around this edge here, and I, I'm not going to care too much about the material. Um, well, I'm going to care a little bit about the material, but I'm not going to care too much about the material. Let's just use uh, shale for most of this. Now, they can build diagonally, but sometimes if uh, the uh, blocks on either side get built before the diagonal block, they just, like, forget how to build and just don't do it. So... I'm not going to uh, worry about them working diagonally too much, um, but uh, the goal here is to kind of stop them from building diagonally if and when possible. So we're going to throw a, um, a, a trap door over that last one, and this should seal off the majority of our accessible layers. There's probably spots that I'm missing here, but I'm not seeing any, which leaves just this kind of area here. So what I think we're going to do is I'm going to wonder... Okay, I guess there's more hot stuff down beneath this, potentially. Um, so because there's these red icons, I'm just going to channel down right here. It could be above to... Ooh. I don't actually know. Well, I'm not seeing the icons from above. Hmm. Yeah, that, that should be safe, at least right there, because there's nothing around it. So we're going to try just digging down into these hot sites, just because I'm kind of curious. We're also going to queue up this whole area to be dug out, just to give us a little bit more working space. And then we're going to be sealing the rest of it off. Uh, I just realized I screwed up that and changed that job, but we'll let them get to this area eventually. It looks like... Uh, they will be running out into here sooner rather than later, I would hope. It appears that most of our miners are busy doing other various tasks around the fort, which is totally fine, and those need to be done as well. Very important. Uh, since we have some doors lying around, I'm going to give these taverns some doors because we do have a pretty well-appointed number of door doors, uh, I would say. Oh, looks like the mining is beginning, so the dwarves get their little butts out here and begin mining. 
a lot of them were uh, constructing that wall that I uh, queued up down at the bottom. Up here on this spot, we're also going to put in some flooring uh, on either side. So uh, there will be some space right there. And I'm just really, really curious about these two spots right here and here. Let's uh, in actually increase the priority of them just a little bit so that they get done first so we can watch them happen. I'm, I'm just curious about what's beneath them. It's either there's something below them or there's something above them. It's one of the two. And Honestly, I'm not sure which is the right answer right now. So it looks like they're just putting together the construction for the last bit right here, and here comes the first job. So if there's something above it, then it's up here. Otherwise, there's something beneath that. Well, it looks like it's definitely something above it because there's nothing hot left. So that means that there's more lava right there. That's, that's exciting. Very much an exciting prospect for the future. All right. So um, now that we've got kind of the, the, the caverns kind of locked down in a pretty good way and sealable in case of dire emergency, um, we do have one other thing that I really need to point out, which is, well, things can come out of this liquidy area over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to queue up a whole bunch of digging uh, out around this area, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did with that kind of hilled off area. We're also going to go check it and see how much of it did get sealed. Uh, looks like they failed to build on most of the corners, like I suggested they might. Um, that's okay, though. We're going to replace those with floors, and uh, everything will be swell, I think. Um, we're going to cancel up a few things that sh should go away and uh, keep things that we can keep. And uh, I'm sure that they'll get to these in no time. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to be doing a very similar thing up on the top. So once all this construction is all said and done, uh, I will continue with the video. Now, something else that I need to do for this upper layers construction is I need to put a little wall along the bottom here. It's impossible for them to build on top of it if there isn't a wall down at the bottom. And we're also going to remove that corner piece right there, and we're going to place another specific spot of shale up here at the top, uh, allowing this nice little outer wall to get worked on. We also have another alert that something has collapsed on the surface which I'm assuming is a tree that had a log in it that fell. Um, that's nothing to be concerned about. That's just normal dwarven behavior. Um, now, as we get this upper layer sealed off and safetyed up a little bit, uh, we will have, um, you know, suddenly this kind of above ground area where stuff can grow and we can work with, and I will get a roof put on top of most of it eventually. Um, we're going to kind of go around the edge here and build some almost pseudo battlements, if you will. In fact, we could straight up build battlements along the front. Why, why don't we even do that? Let's place a bit right here out of shale. And then we're going to uh, kind of go along the top up here. And uh, this is, instead of being a wall, is actually going to be a fortification. Perhaps we'll make this into functioning battlements at some point in the future, but for right now, it's just what I would describe as future proofing. We'll also do the same thing along this side with the shale blocks. And then in the middle here, we're gonna fill this in with a tile. Now remember dwarves and other creatures can move diagonally. So if you're building battlements, it's wise to just fill in your corners kind of like this. But uh, I'm just gonna delete this until all this stuff is constructed purely because I do not want uh, the dwarves to like, you know, run off and go get stuck because that would be suboptimal. So uh, we got a lot of construction going on. I will shush and let the dwarves do their job. Down here, I'm setting up a very similar thing. So we've got walls kind of going around the edges. And as you'll notice, some of these floor constructions actually got suspended. If you would like to unsuspend floor jobs real quick, I got a tip on how to do that. If you actually go up to the labor screen and you go over, or is it the labor screen or is I, oh no, it's just the task screen. It's next to the labor screen. D don't, don't, don't mind me. But if you go to the task screen here, you scroll down, you see all these pause jobs. Yeah, just go and unpause those. Um, we were making some doors, apparently, and they got cancelled, so now they're continued. But when jobs get suspended, you can actually go through in this screen and unsuspend, resuspend, continue, follow, end, whatever, whatever have you, with almost any job in the game. And this very much can speed up your workflow. So we do have these dwarves going through here, and they will finish up with these floors as well as soon as they are able. Looks like we got fresh cave wheat growing. How good to see. And also, if we go a layer up here, you can actually see where it is sealing off. This is actually making this cavern layer quite safe, which is exactly what we want. We want this cavern layer to be very controllable. Not perfectly safe, because that's no fun. But we do want it to be controlled enough that we have the right of way when scary things happen, for lack of a better term. We want to be in charge when the scary monsters arrive. We want to know where they're going to attack us from when they are inevitably going to attack us. 
I hope that makes sense. But from a storytelling perspective, it's no fun to block off every single possible entryway, and Dwarf Fortress is very much a game that lets you do that. So if you want to have exciting events... Ooh, Malachite, would you look at that? If you want to have exciting events happen, you really need to give the enemy the opportunity to provide those exciting events. And God, this is a huge goddamn cavern lair. It goes so far down glorious we're gonna need to do so many cool things with this as we scroll up and through it it's beautiful absolutely beautiful so uh, i'm gonna get some more bedrooms queued up and uh i think maybe uh this is well we do have some time left in this video uh so what i think we're gonna try and focus on for the end of it because i had a bunch of projects i wanted to do for this episode which have now been like thrown into absolute shambles because of how long some of this construction is taking because you know it is dwarf fortress i think we're just gonna focus on getting this surface stuff built up here so we do have this nice little walkway kind of constructed here with a little ramp up the side to it um, i'm just gonna remove these last two trees and we're gonna do a little bit of digging so what we're going to do um, is we're going to kind of end up farming in this area, but we do have these animals down here. So because we're going to be focus on, focusing on surface crops, I'm personally going to focus on one specific surface crop, and this is rope reeds. Now, rope reeds are a very useful uh, thing because they're used mostly for cloth, and this is going to be a very good source of cloth for us. It can also be a good source of food variety. Uh, growing on the surface is very much uh, less uh, efficient. We just built some stairs up to that wall so I can channel out this, this bit here. Uh, but growing up to the surface is way less efficient than um, simply uh going underground however we don't really care about efficiency here what we care about is um quality and variety that's what the dwarves really care about and that's what we care about for our dwarves is quality and variety so that's what we're going to be trying to produce for our dwarves now since we have this whole area uh cut off what we can do is we can dig into this little hole right here we can kind of go this way and we can give a side entrance to our dwarves so that they don't need to go through weird routes and get stuck, which they currently are, I think. Uh, well, actually, I think they can go up on that corner right there, which we're going to need to lock off. But that's going to be the wrong material. I want to use uh, the same color for the upper walls. Um, so when they uh, have access via a corner, they will take that access, and it'll become pretty obvious pretty quickly where they're getting into your fort. And we don't want them to do that, because when my dwarves can do it, well, so can the enemy. Or so can some Etten, or so can some Werecat, or so can some, uh, you know, other scary thing that wants to turn us into paste, which obviously is suboptimal for our longevity. Um, now, as you can see, we are currently actually digging into our fortress here, which is kind of suboptimal because this is the location of our wall up here. So we're just going to go along the bottom here, and we are going to make all of this shale. And then once all this gets installed, we can then go into the workshop section, we can go to farming, and we can go to farm plots, and I'm just going to plant some nice, big farm plots in here. Also, every single time it rains, don't panic, my livestock are just covered in blood from previous fighting. They're fine, I swear. And now, since my livestock are very much sad and covered in blood and probably have seen better days, why don't we just simply remove some of them? So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, over to the unit screen by pressing uh, U on the keyboard. We're going to go to pets and livestock, and we're going to take a look at all of these yaks that we have. We're actually going to queue up a bunch of these for slaughter all the way down. Queue up a whole bunch of these for slaughter. We also don't need that donkey, so we can slaughter that as well. We have a second donkey. We can slaughter that as well. Meat it has been off the menu for a little bit, and I'm sure it is starting to upset our dwarves, so we are going to sort that out. And if you remember... We do have a surplus of ducklings, so I can very much get rid of our adult ducks uh, because we're going to be using these ducks for meats uh, prim primarily, and we can also start making some bone crafts. So since uh, we're, we're going to start making bone crafts, I'm going to queue up bone craft, and we're going to uh, go into conditions here, and we're going to say, oh, when there's, uh, you know, at least uh, five bones lying around, we will make some bone crafts. Um, so we're going to get get some of those queued up so we have some things to sell to those silly humans that keep showing up, because, uh, you know, we'll need to sell them something. We're going to throw in some jet doors, because I, I like the color of jet doors, and uh, now we have this little outdoor growing space. Since this is almost done construction, which should be done in a moment, uh, we're going to queue this up with round 
the route season, no, no matter the season, rope reeds. Uh, so we're going to be growing rope reeds. Uh, they grow year round in this region and uh, shouldn't be an issue. If we decide we would like some drink variety, we could give them split. We could give them longland grass, which makes into longland beer. We could make uh, fisher berries or various other things. This entire thing is probably just going to become one large surface farm. As you can see, here come all those rat reeds. Those jobs just fill up immediately. Rat reeds? Did I say rat reeds? Rope reeds. And uh, we're going to go down to here and queue up season round. These dwarves are going to get these planted real quick because we do have tons of them. Uh, we are getting into late summer, so we're going to need to trade with the dwarves in a second. So let's actually just check as to what we need to purchase and have ready for them. Uh, they really want goblets. Okay. Um, so let's check our metal supply because goblets are made out of metal. So currently we do have some iron bars and we have a bunch of charcoal. Eh, not that great. Uh, let's just scroll under, scroll down and see what we have queued up at our actual smiths right now. Uh, we mostly have iron. We could make billin. That could be nice. We could do a, a short order of billin. Um, we could smelt more lim limonite or tetrahedrite. I'm kind of thinking we just smelt some tetrahedrite. Get that job just going on repeat there and not worry about it too much. And then over here, we're going to get a lignite, smelt, uh, make coke from lignite uh, job up and running. Because I, I, okay, guess we don't have any of that left. I thought we still had some of that lying around. Okay, well, instead of that, we'll just get some uh, magnetite job going. Um, get those two rolling manually. And uh, as soon as those are available, I'm going to queue up uh, silver goblets. And um, because that's going to come out of our tetrahedrite pile. And let's just queue up uh, 25. I'm not sure how much tetrahedrite we have lying around, but just at a quick glance, I know that there was a bunch down underground, so I'm going to make sure that some of that is mining. And I don't know why these floor jobs have been failed in, in yet another time. Maybe they chose to use a material that we no longer have access to. I'm not totally sure what's up with that, but we'll continue that and get that done. Uh, let's just bring down more shale. And uh, so I did see some tetrahedrite down uh, in this cavern, so let's see. Uh, there's marble. Also a very nice material. We also have malachite, which we could just get a low priority auto job going on. So we can make sure that those get mined out. Um, but as we go down a little bit, we got some more of that. Uh, hmm, more marble. More malachite. Could also just queue up this whole area. Really? I mean, why not be greedy? <laughs> we're, getting, we're dwarves. What else would we be if not greedy? Um... Aside from deeply, you know, more magnetite. I thought that we had tetrahedrite around here. Did we not? Oh, there's some tetrahedrite. Okay. Uh, they just happen to be connected to my uh, temples. Well, I guess I will increase the priority on the tetrahedrite in my temples then. Um, and we'll just get those mined out. We'll come back and rewall them up later. I'm, I'm sure the gods won't be too offended. Uh, and then from there, uh, man, I just keep getting sidetracked today. Let's jump back up to the surface and uh, check in on our uh, on our plants. So as you can see, all these rope reeds have been all queued up. We do have this lovely little safe surface farming area, um, and the game is saving again. So I'm going to skip this save screen. All right, so as these uh, animals from the surface keep getting led away off to the slaughter, as we can see this uh, Moses mechanic here is bringing this donkey down for the slaughter, we do have this surplus of meat increasing. And uh, this means that there's some things that are going to be happening. If we actually watch this slaughtering happen in real time, we can watch this dwarf bring the donkey in for the slaughter, and then the slaughter itself happens. And then we can have a peek, and we can see what we actually get out of this. Now, I've seen people commenting that, oh no, all of these bits and pieces of my animals are just being, are, are going to waste and rotting. Just make sure that you have big enough food stockpiles for all of the meat bits to be put in. And also, make sure that you have uh, places like tanner shops to make leather. Because as you can see, our leather uh, supply is rising quite rapidly. To the point where I think I might even put a designated leather stockpile right here. Because well, obviously we're going to need somewhere to put it. So we're going to real quick get a leather stockpile set up here. And we can make a little leather industry right next door connected to our food industry. It's a, it's a very good little secondary industry to set up. We can make shoes. We, I, I Just because I don't like making shoes out of uh, other materials, it's just weird making shoes out of silk. Um, it's just something that perplexes me a little bit, I'll be honest. Um, and also the dwarves really, really like, uh, you know, things made out of leather. So we're going to make some leather for them there. I think we're also going to add two doors into this kitchen. And uh, just to expose my longer term plans here, Right here is the location for my current uh, beverages stockpile right here. But I was thinking that this would be a lovely spot to build a fountain. 
or a little a little spot for water to dribble down. It looks like we have a request. Doto Denrelek would like to reside in Weather Mountains for the purpose of eradicating monsters. You know, I would love to say yes, but I fear that you may just uh, aggravate the caverns. So I'm actually going to decline uh, Doto's request here, unless Doto is somebody interesting. What is Doto? Uh, Doto is a human swordsman. I really do not want to make anything your size. And frankly, we have our own undead that we need to worry about right now. I don't need to worry about you as well. So what I think we're going to do is we are going to get some tombs assigned because I haven't done that and I've been putting that off and putting it off and putting it off. So we're going to go to the back here of this little water feature. We're going to make a number one priority little set of tombs. Now, tombs uh, are easiest to assign if you do them as separate rooms. I've heard reports that Tarn Adams is working on a crypt function where you can just mass designate many, many, many tombs into one area. So I kind of just like making these long hallways with these small rooms on the edge. They don't actually need to be three long. They can only be two long. Um, and that'll be more than enough for a set of tombs. So I'm just going to let them dig this area out and we'll get it smoothed. And then I'll continue talking. We'll wrap the video up there. And as I was talking, it appears that we have a fey mood from our miller, Detan, and they've claimed a stoneworker's workshop. Let's just double check to make sure that they are getting everything that they need. Uh, if they are not there, that's generally a good sign. So far, they haven't claimed anything. I will report back once they've completed gathering their items, or if they get stuck, whatever happens first. So they, the dwarf is now working furiously and a caravan has arrived. I'm going to quickly trade behind the scenes because my priority for this video is to simply set these tombs up at this point. So I will set these to this tomb up and jump up to the surface and trade behind the scenes. If you remember, we were producing goblets and that is what we are going to be trading. Now, since we have all these rooms smoothed up and coffins placed in them, I haven't done the trading yet, but what we are going to do is we are going to assign these as tombs. So in the zone screen, you can actually select multi under tombs. We can go all the way across here and bang. Uh, we just need to wait for that one more door to be placed before I put um, the actual zoning on it. I like to wait for them to finish smoothing its old habits. And the artifact has been created, which is a tetrahedrite bracelet, and he offers it to the Rampart of Raining. Well, that's very kind of you. Let's have a peek at it real quick, Dwarf. And I think that's where we will end this episode. This is a tetrahedrite bracelet. Our craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of cushioned tetrahedrite cabochons and llama wool and peach wood and oval picture jasper cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of lavender jade and peach wood. On the item is an image of troglodytes in picture jasper. On the item is an image of Onul cloistered shell, the dwarf in Morion. So I think I will finish trading off screen and that before I pick up the next episode. And I just wanted to say once again, thank you very much, everybody who's been watching this series so far. This is very much kind of a new ground for me, and I did very much overwork myself throughout December. I've slowed down a whole bunch, so content has slowed. So obviously this series is going to slow as making an episode of this takes about two and a half to three hours between editing and recording. So it's not a quick process to produce one. Hopefully this one was a little bit longer than the previous ones and makes up for the delay in between episodes. I would like you to know that I will be continuing this series until we reach at the very least a duke duchess or baron barony maybe we'll even go all the way to mountain home we did get some rumors uh spread in the background in this episode which means something's going on definitely will be interesting if you would like to see videos of me doing more dwarf fortressy things check out this youtube channel there's a massive playlist of these growing as well as many tutorials and showcases of other pe people's fortress and various other things that i think are interesting and if you would like to see my face while i play video games on twitch you can find me at twitch.tv slash blindirl thank you very much for watching this video and i hope to see you in the next one also on the background right now are my patrons that keep this channel funded thanks for watching